Hey guys, this is Matt with bleepinjeep.com and I'm an astronaut. And today I'm going to show you how to change your Drake... What? Your brake shoes. Don't forget to check out the website bleepinjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube. We also have Jeep and off-road apparel. We have discount codes and coupons for all your parts and all kinds of other stuff as well. bleepinjeep.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out the Facebook page. All right, so this is a brake drum, and this is your brake shoes right here. There's lots of complicated parts in here. Uh, come over, and I'll show them to you. All right, guys, so there's disc brakes and there's drum brakes. Obviously, this is a drum brake. Now, these usually come on the rear of older vehicles, uh, front and rear of real old vehicles. These are kind of dinosaurs now, but a lot of vehicles still do have the drum brakes. Um, they kind of got rid of them because they're complicated as you can see but uh, I'm about to go over it now obviously I've taken the wheel off and then behind that there's a drum I've taken the drum off as well and then you'll see this well actually you'll see uh, an axle shaft which sits right here um, you can get to everything without taking that out you don't need to take the axle shaft out but I have taken it out just so that uh, we can see everything here and I can get to everything easier, easier for this demonstration video. So what we have here is a drum that rides right here on the outside of uh, these brake shoes and that drum is attached to your wheel so whenever these brake shoes push out like this it slows down the drum which in turn slows down your wheel which slows down your tire. So you've got a wheel cylinder here this is filled with fluid when you press the brake pedal the fluid pushes out and pushes these drake brake drums out like this. Now at the bottom here you've got an adjuster. Now this adjuster uh, pushes the bottom in and out so you can adjust the tension. And then you've got all these springs and levers and all kinds of junk to deal with as well. So let's get started and we'll take this thing apart and reassemble. Now they make special tools to take this stuff apart but obviously I've lost them somewhere so usually a good set of uh, pliers and screwdrivers I need a flathead screwdriver, but uh, pliers and screwdrivers, you can get this thing apart uh, without that special tool. Uh, also, you need to wear safety glasses because these springs are under a lot of tension. Uh, some of this stuff can pop loose and hit you in the eyeball. So wear safety glasses, and if you want to get those uh, specialty tools, you can buy those at any auto parts store. Makes the job a little easier, but it's still kind of tricky getting these springs pressed and then rotated. Okay, so the first thing I like to do when working on something complex like this is get out my phone and start taking pictures. Now the more pictures you have, the better off you'll be because this is kind of complex and you want to make sure you get all these springs and little pieces back in the same spot. Uh, if you don't take pictures, that's highly unlikely. Also, it's uh, kind of cramped in here, so uh, I've moved you over to the side there and hopefully I can get in here along with you so that I can get these parts off. If I'm having trouble, it's because of you, not me. Oh gosh, this is frustrating. I just uh, took this entire thing apart and then my camera decided it's going to crap out on me and erase my last uh, uh, file. But anyway, let's try this again. Uh, I've got my screwdriver here and we're just going to start taking things apart until the drum brakes fall off. Now, I'm no professional. I'm sure there's an order to this, but uh, whatever floats your boat. Just gonna take these springs off any way I can get them. Okay, maybe I'll come down here first. Looks like that spring is attached to this clip here. There's a spring behind that clip, so don't misplace that. Uh, also, this little piece right here is a booger sometimes when it gets in the wrong spot. Let's see if I can get this clip, this spring out. Once I get these springs out, I'm going to take all these pieces and I'm going to set them down right below here, kind of in the spot that I took them out from. That way, 
it'll be easier for me to figure out where they go. Whoa! Now that piece fell out. Now the spring is on the right hand side on that. I'm not sure if that matters. Uh, let's see. I'm going to leave some of this stuff on the shoes if I can. That way I can put this on the ground. And uh, if you've got new shoes, you can transfer those uh, without missing anything. I know that's going to poke me in the eyeball when that flies off. There we go. Okay, so you got a spring here, a spring here with this little uh, piece for the emergency brake. This is for the emergency brake. And that wraps around there. And then uh, this little clip for the, for the tensioner. Now this piece comes off first here. And then you've got that line for the emergency brake there. And then, all right, looks like the only thing holding that all together are these little boogers. Now these are spring clips with this little pin that goes through the back side. And to get those off, what you do is you have to push in, kind of hold the back if you can, push in and rotate. And it's kind of tricky. Now this is where that special tool comes in a little bit handier than just a pair of pliers. It's able to grab it and rotate it a little better. There we go. I just pushed that spring in, rotated, and there's like a keyway in there. Once that keyway fits through this pin, see if I it locks in like this and then it comes out like that. So that'll go back in when we go to put it back in in the same spot. All right, and for the left side. I'm gonna have to move you out of the way. Now if you can't get that to rotate, what you can do is spin the back piece. There we go. All I did was push in on that spring and then I rotated the back until it fit through that keyhole. Now, this comes off. This is part of the emergency brake. So remember where that goes too. Now your brakes are going to probably be a little bit different than this. Because uh, they're, all, they're all very similar, but they're all a little bit different. Um, also on this uh, wheel cylinder, this one just happens to fit right into the brake shoe. But some of them have a little extension that, that pushes in right here and it sticks out about that far and contacts further out on the brake shoe. So that would be one extra piece. Alright, so here's all the pieces that I collected on the ground. I'm just doing this for fun, or actually to show you guys. But uh, if you're going to be replacing the brake shoes, you would want to transfer all this stuff over. Uh, actually this clip here, this spring here, and this little bracket. Anything that you can find on your old brake shoes, you want to transfer that onto the new brake shoes and uh, try and keep everything organized like this so that when you go to put it back together you can just pop it right back in. Also if you're going to be replacing the wheel cylinder, now is the time to do that. You want to check this always. Uh, make sure that there's no tears in the rubber and everything looks good. This looks pretty good, so we're going to start putting it back together. So the first thing I'll do is I'll put this up here and put the little pin in the back side, pop it through, and then I'll take the spring, put it over the top. Now this is the hardest part of the entire ordeal here is getting this spring back in. Now I'm going to try and push this in. And as I push this in and it goes through the hole, then I'll try and rotate the back side there and lock it in place. Now I'll do the same for the other side. I'll first put this where it goes here. Just about like that. Hold this in place. 
And now I lost my piece. That, there it is. Now, once again, the camera's in the way, so watch out. All right, so I got that second spring in there. Now for the tricky bits, and that is getting everything back in place exactly where it belongs. So, what you want to do is push this on the top here, right around that circle. There we go. And then you want to get all the pieces back in place. I think that was first on the list, if I remember correctly. And then this little piece. And then one of these springs. This is where it helps to have a spring puller. But if you don't have a spring puller, you can try this method, which is just put your screwdriver there. It's real dangerous though. Make sure you got your eye protection on. Pull that up and over until it pops into place. And then when you do this side, make sure that that little bracket back there, that little pivot point for this is all the way seated. Otherwise you're going to have problems. Take your screwdriver and try it again. There we go. Now, for the bottom section. Oh, I forgot to put this in place, but I think it'll still manage. You just put that piece in, and then we need to pry it out. Get this piece in there. Ow. All right. There we go. Now, this spring winter, somewhere around here, where'd the other side go? This is where it comes in handy to have your your pictures. Let me look at that. Actually I was wrong. From the picture you can see that it goes from big hole to big hole. So from here to there. And in the picture it was on the outside. So I'll just go from here. Grab my pliers. Pull that over. Oh! Connect it on there. Now for the adjuster. It goes in there. Might have to adjust that in just to get it on and then I'll adjust it back out. There we go. Now this emergency brake piece comes around and I believe it goes right there. There. Something's wrong here. Let's see. That should be lower down. There we go. That's kind of a critical part right there is to have that uh, adjuster uh, on a little gear like that so it'll only turn one direction and not the other direction. And I think, if I'm looking correctly, I think that's it. Now we just need to make our adjustment and put the drum back on and we'll be good to go. Alright, so I'm going to make an, an another video solely on adjusting this uh, self-adjuster. But let me just go over it real quick with you in this video in case you don't want to watch that one. Basically there is a rubber piece back here. Uh, that pops out of the back. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your drum on and then you're going to stick your screwdriver back in here and you're just going to move the screwdriver handle down. Oops, sorry. Other way, you're going to move the screwdriver handle up which will move the screwdriver blade down. And what that'll do, do is it'll push the brake shoes out and what you want is a slight drag on the brake drum. 
You don't want it to be tight. You don't want it to be too loose or whenever you go to push the pedal, nothing will happen. You want it to be just snug. And to do that, uh, you can get it snug right now. Not too snug, but just close. Put the brake drum on it. And then once you get the brake drum on, make your final adjustment here until it's just barely dragging. And then you'll be good to go. Put your rubber boot back on and it's done. That self adjuster should then self adjust every time you reverse or in some cars when you pull the emergency brake. It should tighten itself up as needed whenever your uh, pads wear down. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to check out the website bleepinjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube, none of the boring stuff. We also have hats and t-shirts for uh, Jeep and apparel, that kind of thing. We've also got coupon codes and discounts for all your parts and anything else you could want. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out the Facebook page. We'll see you next time. Please leave your comments below.